Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the planning, Carver Planning Board of August 22nd. We will call the meeting to order at 7.05 p.m. if we would rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first order of business is uh, an approval not required. The purpose of this plan is to create lots one, two, and three from property owned by ADGA Realty, Assessors Map 8, lot 29-01 and 2, located at South Main Street in the Residential Agricultural Zoning District discussion and possible vote. Good evening, if you could identify yourself. Uh, good evening. Uh, Rick Grady from Grady Consulting. Uh, I have a pretty straightforward A&R plan here with adequate frontage on South Main Street with 58 uh, and adequate area for each of the lots as well. Um, there is a cranberry bog to the rear of the property that our wetland scientist has determined was constructed out of upland area, not wetland area, so it's not subject to protection under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, and I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Um, did the Conservation Commission have a chance to do this? Did you file an ANOI in regards to this submission? We did not. Because Indian Brook is well within the 200-foot setback zone, and that should have been marked out on, on this, as well as any 65 and 100-foot. Uh, our CONCOM is the one that makes the determination in regards to where wetland is and what is a wetland. Um, and that's why we require an A and an OI to be filed uh, in regard to all submissions. And it should, all the footage should be s noted on the map. Because um, so Indian Brook. Indian Brook is shown on the plan on the right hand side. It's off of the property. It still has a 200 foot protection zone. And that's, that's why we require A and OIs to be done in regards to this. Um, Mr. Bott, when was this uh, submitted? Uh, it, it's left blank <coughs> on here. Filed with the town clerk on August 8th. August 8th. So, if I may, so under Massachusetts General Law, uh, the Planning Board has 21 days to endorse an ANR plan. So, based on this date of August 8th, uh, the Planning Board's next meeting will be after the ANR plan was submitted. And as we've talked about before, and as we'll hear in the training we've got on the 31st, the only parameters for the board endorsing an a and plan is does it have frontage on one of three ways. And in this case, it has frontage on South Main Street, which is a public way. As is a typical fashion, what the plan says in that right corner up there, and we can scroll in and take a look at it, or I can make less clicks with the mouse because you know it's a little dicey. Uh, the planning board's endorsement of this plan indicates only that the plan is not a subdivision under MGL Chapter 41, Section 81L, and does not indicate that the lot is buildable or that it meets zoning, health, conservation, or general bylaw requirements. So there's no recognition uh, that anything that goes, comes before the board as an ANR plan is buildable. That's up to the applicant to do that when they come for a building permit. So, in spite of what the planning board's regulations are, if someone submits a plan, um, the board has those 21 days to endorse it. Uh, you can ask the applicant for uh, a continuance uh, if they, you know, want to go and, and provide that additional information. But it's not required under the statute. Right, but the application should be completed before it's it's submitted, and and that should be checked in regards to this because. At this point, 
we can't really do a site walk and Conservation Commission hasn't had a chance to weigh in in regards to this this property. Um, no offense, we don't doubt you, but it it's not the applicant's purview to decide what is and what is not wetlands in regards to properties. So um, I think what the statement says in the endorsement not only addresses conservation, everything going forward is at the applicant's risk. We could find out that the lot doesn't perk. We could find out all kinds of other right, related but, information that right, would prevent but that's, from getting that's, a building permit. That's on, the weight of that is on you. The weight of a completed application where we can make uh, an appropriate decision in regards to the projects, and it's not just this project, it's every project is on us. Uh, I just have a couple quick questions in regards to this. I see an existing property line, and I see an easement. Is the existing property line defining lot, let's say lot two, is that existing property line defining it as 60,000 square feet? Or is the darker line behind it, where the easement is, is that? It's the darker solid line. So you don't own that easement? Yes, each individual lot will own the easement. Well, you. what you're saying is that the Cranberry Bog owner owns the land under the easement, but the lot one, two, and three are going to have the right to use that easement. Is no, that? No, vi vice versa. Okay, all yeah, right, that's, yeah. that's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah, the so, lot owner will own the fee in the land, and the Cranberry Bog will have an easement over the So we're property. extending the property line from the existing property line back roughly 94 feet to a new property line. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying you're going to get rid of the easement, basically? No, no, the easement will belong to the Cranberry Bog owners, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah. Which, is, which is fine. As long as the property is owned by... For zoning purposes, each of the lots will have adequate area. Yes. Yes. All right. Any further questions or comments? All right. Um, the chair will accept a motion to approve the ANR for lots one, uh, two, and three off of South Main Street with the uh, statement that they are not to be considered buildable lots until Conservation Commission has had the opportunity to do um, an ANOI and to assess the wetlands. I'll make said motion. Motion made by Mr. Dion. Second. Second by Ms. Sordillo. Do we have any further discussion? I just need you to restate the motion. Um, that the lots are not to be considered buildable lots until uh, Conservation Commission has determined the boundaries of any wetlands that might be in regards to this. Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Dion? Mr. Dion says aye. Mr. Robinson says aye. Colin Sedillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll get the mile out time for you and some of you staff can pick it up. Okay, yeah, I think Bob will probably stop by and pick it up. All right. Thank you. You have a good evening. You too. All right. Our next order of business is a public hearing notice on the epic application of Cape Way Cannabis requesting a special permit pursuant to sections 4950, 5300, and 2230 of the Carver Zoning Bylaw located at 307 and 307A Tremont Street in Carver, Mass. Assessor's Map 95, Lot 3AE to extend the hours of operation to Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in a marijuana overlay general business district. Good evening. Good evening. Kevin Howe. And, and if I may, just uh, we we're just having this discussion as a sidebar over here. Um, so this is a special permit by the planning board, and that requires a four-fifths vote. <coughs> 
So one of the planning board members is in here tonight. And so you have these five folks who can vote on it because Mr. Williams is our alternate. If for some reason one of those four members isn't here at a continued hearing, uh, you won't have a sufficient number of votes to carry. No, one, two, three, four. Yeah, you'll have four, but you need all four of them for the vote. So Wait, what? Don, Don makes five, right? Right, if one member What's is missing. Right now, there's five. Right. But if a member's, a, a different member is not here at a continued right. hearing, okay. then yes. you're down to just those four. Right. So you'll need 100% of the votes of the board. So your option is to go ahead this evening or to wait until there's a full board. I always like to make the outcome no, aware of that. I, I understand what prior you're to. Right. Okay. Yes. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. I appreciate Bob. it as All right. well. All right. Um, would you care to give a narrative as to why you wish to extend the hours? I know that it when, was on your recommendation that. When these hours were put in um, at the town meeting, when this was uh, marijuana overlay district was adopted, there was a church in that area. And it was the hours were put in place for the churches so the church could have services and so forth. We ended up buying the church and there's no church there any longer. So we would like to extend our hours to normal business hours. Um, I don't believe that the six o'clock requirement is part of our bylaws. It, it was under your recommendation and our agreement that we set it Sunday till six o'clock. I, yeah. I think so, it was in the bylaw because it was brought up at, at the town meeting. That's what I was understanding. Yeah. Good. So if I may, so, Please. so looking at the bylaw, what the bylaws says that uh, in addition to any specific conditions applicable uh, to the applicant's non-medical marijuana establishment, the special permit granting authority may include the following conditions in any permitted granted bylaw under this, under this bylaw. One of those is A, hours of operation. And it says A, hours of operation. If none are specified in the special permit, the hours of operation will be limited from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and noon to 6 p.m. on Sundays. So it doesn't express what the hours of operation are in the bylaw. It has a default that says if the board doesn't specify them, they will default to this. In the okay. interim, I have been researching Massachusetts general law about hours of operation because a question was asked and we've got uh, an, an email from somebody who's in your packet and I'll read it in just a moment or so. Uh, but there are no hours of operation uh, for marijuana sales as there is for alcohol sales. So oftentimes we equate uh, recreational marijuana uh, to package stores. Uh, the police chief and I have discussed this and we, we feel sort of the same way that uh, while there aren't any rules, any laws for when you can sell marijuana in <coughs> Massachusetts, um, there are for alcohol and lots of times, lots of towns have them sort of on that same footing. Uh, so there's no prohibition for whatever hours they're asking for, it's whatever the board decides. Uh, but it's not unusual for folks to look and say, you know, we're going to have the hours of this operation the same as we would for a package store. And in that case, uh, you know, package stores are required, uh, they're allowed to operate Saturday, Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 10 to 11. So you, the board can do whatever they like on this application. I, and now, I, I, my question is, it's defining, is our bylaws defining, or is it the state setting the, the state? The state Default. says it's up to the locals what the hours of operation are. Our bylaw has a default in it. If your special permit didn't put any hours in, if you just said, yeah, open your shop, and you didn't express any hours, it would default to that uh, section of the bylaw. It well, says yeah, those hours of operation. All right. So it, it's specifically in the order of conditions here. So. Shouldn't this be in front of the ZBA, not the planning board? No. This is, a, this is a modification of a special permit. Their original special permit had these hours, and it's essentially modifying a special permit, and that's what they're here for tonight. So uh, the original decision had those hours of 
dramatic pauses, I come through a very large city. Uh, limited to 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 12 to 6 on Sundays. So, uh, Cape Way Cannabis is here to ask to amend their special permit, uh, which is essentially uh, what they're doing at this point, asking to change those hours to 8, um, 8 a.m. to 8, uh, 8 p.m. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Sunday. Yes. Okay. Now, personally, I'm I'm not inclined to reduce it from 9 a.m. to 8 a.m. in regards to to uh, that's just my personal opinion in, in regards to this. I I think 9 a.m. is a reasonable time to be to be opening it up. And currently, your Sunday is 12 to 6. 12 to 6. And but in in the original, that was because there was a church there, and we were looking at a property across the street from the church, and it was a. What's it outlined in here? What's? Sorry. What was the question? Um. All right. So all right. So, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and 12 to 6 on Sundays. Um, okay. Right, and people come and go from church. Um, personally, I don't mind the uh, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And I, I would prefer 10 to 8 p.m. on a Sunday because the church, well, it's a lot of people on the road at 9 and 10, but. <laughs> Now, I noticed there's been um, food trucks at the business. Yeah, we have, we've had one there one day a week or sometimes twice a week. And that's been permitted or otherwise checked through the Board of Health in regards yes, to that? Yes, he's all licensed with the Board of Health. And it's, a, it's not every week, it's sporadic here and there. Um, okay, and, and I would also recommend a, a vermin control plan. Um, be established if, there, if food is going to be served on the property because now there's going to be barrels with uh, with waste and food in it. But um, all right, uh, is there anybody here from the public that would care to well, speak? Mr. Chair, I have a question. Sure. Yeah. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I actually would feel a little bit better before voting on this, knowing uh, how the police chief feels about this. I do see that the uh, fire chief. I, I meant that uh, Jesse Boyle did. Um, oh, I don't have this. a copy. Of, oh. No, actually, that's uh, lot five. Jesse's number. Huh? Oh no, 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 no. I, no, no I'm looking no, at no, it. No, yeah. Right here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm looking at it. I just okay. don't have. I don't have any input from the police chief. Right. And personally, I don't want it to be open um, before noon time. And uh, I, I was fine going forward and accepting those hours originally. So um, I'm going to need to hear what the police chief has to say could about you, that. And, could you speak uh, to the police chief? Because I, sp I spoke with the police chief when he was down at, at our shop last week. Yeah, I can shed some light on that if you'd like. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so I emailed the chief uh, and we talked today uh, and he, he replied back to me. Um, he said, uh, uh, so uh, the question I asked the chief was, we have Cape Boy Cannabis looking to expend their hours of operation. And I wanted to touch base with you about Ms. McNamara's comments, which we should read in a moment. Uh, and, and have they've had any past issues with Cape Boy Cannabis, and do you have any concerns about extending their hours of operation? As I wrote, in general, I, uh, I take a general view of dealing with cannabis like alcohol by regulating it, taxing it, and allowing it to operate like the local packy. Uh, the chief's reply, uh, no, we have logged no issues with Cape Way Cannabis to date. Two, I have no concerns with the business operations during whichever hours it is legal to do so. I agree with your view in comparison to a package store. And three, as for the event that's coming up on 9-9, uh, they've had similar events with no issues. And I'm told this one is smaller than the first and there will hopefully be uh, no issues there. Uh, so the chief has weighed in and said, he doesn't have any issue. Smaller than the first? 
Yeah, so there's been a couple of different uh, uh, food trucks on the site. Uh, so I checked with the Board of Health uh, on that as well as the uh, select board. Uh, and the but it also kind of sounded like that uh, he was okay with the fact that it was operating the same hours as a, a package. Yeah, store. correct. What is the what time do package doors open on? Package doors open uh, 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Sundays. 11 p.m. We don't have a package door open in this town past nine o'clock. Massachusetts, Massachusetts allows. So you're, you're giving us Massachusetts yeah, law. Correct. Well, I'm I'm concerned about our. Bylaws, yeah, right, because well, they don't open until nine or ten in the morning. The amount right? of business they get, it's not worth staying open if nobody's coming. Mm -hmm. I said I don't believe they open before nine o'clock or ten o'clock in the morning. I haven't but seen I anything haven't open before nine o'clock or anything open after nine o'clock. Right. So. So that's that's the state. So regarding uh, uh, food trucks and, and things like that, like I said, this is not you know, part of uh, this particular application, but the question was asked, and so uh, I went and did the research and talked to folks within, uh, within Town Hall, uh, asking, you know, the select board, uh, you know, when someone has an event, do they have to come to them for, you know, something from a common victor's license or something like that. The reply we got is, since it's on private property, so there's no restrictions on a ban, Catering permits, food trucks that do not have a permanent address would fall into the Board of Health, not the Select Board. Uh, and so I checked with, uh, uh, with our health agent who told me that the food truck that they're using, Barbecue... Uh, last Bite Barbecue. Last, thank you, Last Bite Barbecue, uh, has a valid permit to operate in the town car. So uh, I wanted to kind of address the comments that I got from someone who can't be at the meeting, and like I said, I still haven't read their letter yet. Uh, but Hours similar to package stores, not an issue with food trucks, uh, and uh, uh, not an issue with, uh, with the Board of Health uh, for that particular thing, even though that's not their request. Their request is simply to change those hours. All right. Um, is, do you have any more questions? No, please. Person, personally, I well, would like we to. Can, Close to, the public hearing and open it for discussion. Um, well, I want to know what the public has to say about it. Um, oh, right. We have a letter from the yeah. public. So, uh, so uh, I received an email uh, today uh, from uh, uh, Laura McNamara, 246 Tremont Street. Uh, it is my understanding that Cape Boy Cannabis is looking to increase their current hours of operation. With regards to Sunday hours, uh, are they bound to the current blue laws that are applied to alcohol? I believe the proprietors of the establishment are looking to open at 8 a.m. on Sundays, in which I, we, are opposed. I have been very vocal with my regards, uh, with my strong personal feelings about free-range pot use, especially among society's early adolescents. Also learning that Capeway Cannabis is planning an event in Perens Pot Party, close Perens, on their property for Saturday, September 9th, has this event already been approved? Huge concerns about this and its contributing impact on overburdening Tremont Street. King Richard's Fair is also hosting their event that weekend. Tremont Street, in my opinion, is a neglected section of Carver. There is ample room for pedestrian crosswalks and sections of sidewalks with added stop signs as more and more businesses are squeezed in on Tremont Street. I believe it's the duty of the town to make long overdue and necessary improvements. Respectfully, Laura McNamara. And regarding uh, the question about traffic and the, the uh, uh, fact that King Richard's Fair is opening that week as well. Uh, the chief goes on to say, um, while the fair is in operation on that day, the first few weeks are usually the slowest. So the issue before the board are hours of operation, uh, but because these folks, and I did email them back to let them know we'd be talking about this because they couldn't make it, uh, that their other concerns have been addressed by other boards uh, within the town. Um, I didn't quite catch what the event on September 9th is. We're having one of our vendors, uh, Garcia, uh, handpick is a brand, and they're bringing out their Airstream, and we just take a little spot in our parking lot, and there's some promotional stuff that day just for customers coming in. But no marijuana. No, you know, marijuana consumption is not allowed on our property. No, I mean, like, you're not going to be giving away samples no, God, or selling no. out no, of an airstream. It's going to be t shirts and Yeah, t shirts, keychains, and things like that. Okay. They're promoting okay. their brand. And so we 
decided to help them promote their brand. There's no it. samples. It, it's a good <laughs> question because <laughs> pack, package stores are allowed to bring yeah. wine yep. and other beverages and samples. So I don't blame yeah. them for asking. No, no. and I, you know, we we do samples in our store of uninfused products quite regularly. We have an ice cream social every Tuesday. We sell some ice cream that's infused. You can come in and get an uninfused ice cream cone, taste what the ice cream flavor tastes like and that kind of stuff. Inside the store? It's in a reception area. So you're, you're serving food inside of the building? I guess building? it's a sampling, I guess. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know where, well, I suppose you guys sell edibles, right? We do. I, I do believe that when it comes to dairy products, there's more stringent regulations in regards to that. So okay, we'll look into it. If we, yeah, we we'll check to with do the it. Board of Health on the ice okay. cream, uninfused ice cream sandwich. Yes, the, yeah, that, and my thought was so for the listening audience, uninfused means there's no can, no, no THC, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no product right. in the product because right. right. you, you can't be serving any foods or I mean you can sell them for them to take okay. away, but inside the store. You go to Shaw's. There should be no samples. samples. Well, it, I, I know the liquor stores do it, but uh, grocery stores. I'm do pretty it. sure it's. I used to do that. It's not allowed, and right, because you're not allowed to consume it on the property. So. Right. Um, but what about those wine tastings that they have? Well, that's not. My, that's my yeah, point. My point is, he had brought up a good question. You know. You're not allowed to consume. Using that as an example. Any so, if I could just clarify, we don't. Products. Give anything away that it's against state law right. for us to give anything away that has any THC in it. We don't. Right. We're not even allowed to discount products. Right. So. But the law also says you're not allowed to consume it on the premises either. In that's so. on several signs in our property yep. as well. All right. Can I ask what's the difference between medical marijuana and non-medical marijuana? Um, the the products themselves, there is no difference. There is a difference in the amount that you can purchase. And there's a difference in the tax base on it. So uh, medical marijuana is taxed differently than recreational marijuana. But the products themselves come from the same exact line. And how do you choose which one that you're going to sell? We are only recreational. You have to have a medical <coughs> card to purchase medical marijuana, which you have to update annually. Um, but we, we do not have medical marijuana in our facility. We are a recreational uh, facility only. And, and I could be wrong, but I think you need this. Spe separate license for medical. It is a separate marijuana. license, and you also have to you know, grow facility attached to have a medical facility. Oh, okay. and that's the, the downside to it. And because it's a medical product, I don't know that it's taxed. So, right. I think that's about has this yeah, and uh, the the Carver bylaw has two sections in it: uh, four nine five zero for medical marijuana dispensaries. And five thousand addressing non-medical marijuana, so they're addressed separately yes. in the bylaw. Well. And we have separate overlay yeah. districts for them. So the question before the board tonight is hours of operation. All right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The board field. I don't see any any public here. Anybody that care to speak on it? Um, how do you feel about closing the public hearing? Do you? Yeah, I mean, this was publicized, right? Yes. And the public didn't come forward that, well, yeah. I've got an email, but. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so the chair will accept the motion to close the public hearing on the application of Cape Boy Cannabis requesting a special permit pursuant to sections 49, 50, 5300, and 2230 of the Carver Zoning Bylaw. Located at 307-307A Tremont Street in Carver, Mass. Assessor's Map 95, Lot 3AE to extend the hours of operation Sunday 8 to 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. in a marijuana overlay general business district. Um, before I accept that motion, uh, I have one more question. Um, I thought we were closing the public hearing. We are, so, but I wanted to ask him a question before we did it. Um, the building... The separate building? Yes. What's that used for? S storage of t-shirts and nothing to do with marijuana okay. cannabis whatsoever. Excellent. All right, so the chair will accept the motion to close the public hearing. I'll make that said motion. Motion made by Mr. Robinson. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. Sordillo. All right, so we're going to open it for discussion. Your thoughts on the subject? So, personally, I, I would like to see the hours coincide with the hours of the 
the um, liquor stores, package stores. Um, so I would have to find out, you know, personally, uh, what do we have five, do we have three or five package stores we spot? What are their hours of operation? <coughs> um, I mean, I want it to be as fair to you <laughs> as it is to them, but I prefer it not to be open on, on Sunday if you didn't have to, but I'm not saying I'm against that. I'm saying I would like the hours to coincide with alcohol consumption. That's very fair. Yeah, so most of the liquor stores in Carver open uh, at 8 to 9 a.m. on Monday through Saturday. Uh, and all of them open after 10 on Sunday because that's what the law is. So nobody opens before 10 on Sunday. Uh, and most of the package stores open at 8 or 9 o'clock. But it doesn't specify, I mean, marijuana sale, it can be different than that. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 94, as well as 935 CMR 500 adult use of marijuana pertaining to hours of operation is silent on that. They leave it to the local towns to regulate the hours. Um, so if you wanted to look, take a model of, uh, of what uh, liquor stores are doing, uh, then you could certainly say um, 8 to 8, Monday through Saturday, uh, and 10 to... I'm almost positive it's 10 to 6 on Sunday. It's 10 to 8 on Sunday for, for Jamie's Liquors. For Jamie's Liquors? Yeah. That's just the one I just pulled up, but... Uh, oh, for the one at Shaw's? Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I want him to be able to have, in you know, my opinion, I want him to be able to have the same ability to run his store according to how, you know, uh, alcohol consumption is sold. Well, I, I, I would go with 9 to 8 Monday through Saturday and 10 to 8 on Sunday if that's... That's, that's where I would like to sit at. Uh, that that sounds, doesn't mean that you guys have to agree with me. No, no. I, 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 that's what I'm, I feel comfortable I'm on board with, with you, uh, Mr. Can Pena. I ask a question? Please. Um, do you think that you really would have business at that early hour in yes. the morning? So we've talked to other retailers that are in the same industry, and, and they have a busy hour from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, and that's why we've extended. And then on Sundays, we feel that we miss a lot of business because people are, by noontime, maybe on to where they're going for the day, whether it be football, beach, or any of those things. So we do, and we've looked at our, some of our friends that have other sites and, and, and you know, they do quite well during those hours. Yeah, and just looking at on Sunday hours in other uh, marijuana stores in other towns, and I ask a question on the planner's list serve as well. Uh, Sunday 9 to 9, Sunday 8 to 9, Sunday 9 to 8, uh, 9 to 10, seven days a week. And uh, the four folks who replied back to me. So I guess then my, my question would be, um, could you give me, say, the hours of what are our town, Wareham? Middleborough, Plymouth, right? All, those. All, all comparable. There's that's some, what I'm saying. Yeah, those, so, are, those would be the towns uh, that border us, and those towns all have those hours. Yeah, I looked at those uh, Plymouth. I think there's one in Plimpton and in Wareham. Uh, just because I was on the map and I was clicking on things and saw that, uh, uh, like I said, on Sunday, 10 o'clock is that. Part. Hard date, but uh, the other stores open earlier than, uh, uh, than, than uh, what we do here. I I personally feel bad that I wasn't uh, prepared for this. I know you must have filed for this, but the clerk, what August eighth? Yeah, I think prior to that, maybe. Even. Yeah, I guess like, this was the first meeting. Whatever. Yes, yeah, yeah. the first meeting. Those are the those are the things that I would have checked out on your behalf. You know. Uh, that I was just hoping to get some clarity on. Yeah, I, the Wareham stores all open at 8 o'clock, I think, maybe even on Sundays. Um. Yeah, but if you take that path of treat them like package stores, then 10 o'clock Sunday opening, uh, and be open till 8. Mr. Dion, your recommendations? Well, I don't mind the 8 to 8, Monday through Saturday, but I would be looking like 10 to 8 on a Sunday. I like the, the 9 to 8. I have concerns about the 8 o'clock opening hour and 
people going to work. But um, that's just 10 to 8 on Sundays. But um, I, I, I personally I, am leaning towards that. The nine so you're looking for 12-hour days, 8 to 8 or 8 to 9? Uh, 8, 8 to 8, Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday, 9 to 8. So that's an 11 hour day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it's the way he's got it proposed here, it's what, 13 hours total for a week. And we want well, to. Well, the, the thing that confuses me is you got Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., right? Oh, well, that's what he wants, yes. That's the last thing. Okay. But if you go from eight, 10 to 8 on a Sunday, you're giving him 11 hours total over, over a week more, which is, you know. Well, no, I feel like deal. if he can do more business starting earlier, why not give him an edge? That's my own personal opinion. You know, and people that go into those dispensaries, they check their IDs and everything. That's... And Maybe it's a whole different thing than alcohol. To go to work. <laughs> that really isn't a whole lot of. I, I thought when this first opened, it was the big cons big concern was traffic, and I don't think there's been, you know, traffic jams and, uh, you know. No. We, no we I've didn't. driven by there several times, and uh, it doesn't look overloaded or anything. And I I just I just want to see you succeed. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Well, the chair will, well, so again, you want to do 8 to 8 Monday through Saturday, and then what, 9 to 8 on Sunday? Or? 10 to 8 is what the liquor stores are, so I think that's fair. But, but then personally, I would be comfortable with 8 to 8. I would be comfortable giving them the hour Monday through Saturday, but I'd really, I'd really like to stick to the at least 10 o'clock to 8 on Sunday. I'm 10 to 6 on Sunday, and, uh, but you guys yeah. are thinking 8, so. Well, I'm preferring 9 in the morning till uh, 8 at night, and Monday so through Saturday, Mr. Bott, you are Sunday 10 to 8, or 10 to 6. Our package stores are what time on Sunday again? They, you can't open a package store on Sunday before 10. Yeah, That's 10 to 8. In Massachusetts. In, in, in my opinion, I'm I'm okay with everything, but opening any sooner than ten on Sunday. That's fair. I'm um, I'm of the same mindset. Well, that's what I said. Ten to eight on so Sunday. So I think I think we're pretty much in agreement on that. Right. Um, eight to eight during the week and ten to eight on Sunday. Yeah. I, I I'll agree to that. And I'm not trying to sway anybody. No, 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 no. This is this is your opportunity to sway us. people. I feel comfortable giving you, know, you it, more hours. We appreciate, and I'd like it, like it to be comfortable to you know the package stores. I'm struggling with the opening at eight o'clock. I prefer at nine o'clock, but I'm willing to bow to the majority of the board. So uh, this is a special permit, correct? Correct. So, Mr. Williams. Eight, eight to eight during the week, ten to eight on Sundays. So I'll 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 be willing to accept that. Okay. Yeah. Right, I'll make I'll make that said motion. That Monday we, through Saturday. We do Monday through Saturday, eight to eight, and we do Sunday ten to eight. Is that right? I think that's fair. Yep. Okay. That's so that will be my motion. Wait, wait. Would you mind including um, a vermin control plan and? Of course. Of course. Um, my thing is, is I just, uh, with the event, I just don't want to, obviously, for my town's sake, promote, you know, um, the sales of it. Obviously, it's there, and it's your right to sell it. I just don't know how I feel about, you know, promoting it by giving things away and stuff like that. But where they do it in package stores, you know, I can't say no to you when they do it in package stores. Um, but the vermin control. Uh, is going to address, you know, food waste, so. Yes, and uh, is your 
Is your um, thumpster fenced in? Yes, it is. All right. And locked. All right. So. Uh, and our vendor takes his trash with him. All right. So now, are we opening a door for uh, any events, or are we just considering this one event on the nine? No, that's not the board's role in just we're not know, in, yeah, in regulating we're not somebody having an event. That's the right. Board of Health. Right. That's, uh, those okay. are the no, I was just wondering yeah. why that was, you know, I'm, I appreciate the fact that that was brought up so we can hear it. In just So when we've done this, we've gone to the uh, police department ahead of time. Oh, okay. And asked them. Okay. Good. That was our first stop. No. I, and, I'm, in the fire Thank department. you for telling me that. Yeah, no, in, you in, know, there might be the no, need in, for extra, you know, in, reinforcement. So the chief was down getting some ribs last week. Mm -hmm. And so I went out and talked to him and he said, you know, he has no and I, you know, he knew that what we were doing and he had That's no good. issue with it. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to ask him. Yeah, no, uh, we've his had personal a, opinion on it. We've had a very uh, good relationship with the police department. In fact, they've used our cameras three times for incidents that have happened around us, not on our property. We've not no, had any incidents. No, I know you guys are doing a good job. I know you're doing it right. Um, this is my my uh, responsibility to make sure I understand. that uh, I'm being as fair to you as far as business is concerned in, in a sensitive, you know, uh, industry like this now. So, and vermin proof and trash can proof trash cans. Yes. Trash cans. So um, I need a second on on Mr. Robinson's motion, eight to eight Monday through Saturday, ten to eight Sunday, vermin control plan and vermin proof um, trash receptacles are are to be put on the property and they're to be put not where they're out in the open because we had to limit screening in regards to this property due to state laws. We don't have any trash cans on the property or any that stay on the property outside. We have a well, dumpster. Are people eating eating ribs and such? The, the gentleman that does the truck takes the has a barrel and he takes the trash with That's him. That's fine. At, at, at the end of every evening. All right. So we don't. Right. So, I mean. Fair enough, just to say a condition that if there's any, any food in an, in an event that's brought there, that it just has to be removed from the premises. Yes. Yeah. And you wouldn't need a vermin control, right? Well, you'd still need a vermin control because it's food. Right. That's fair. That's fair. And I appreciate the fact that you are working with the police, you know, on, in any event like that. We've had a very good relationship with yeah, the chief and the fire good. department as well. And, and we, we want to be able on the same page in a book. And we've talked to him about that from the very beginning. If yes. he had heard of any issues, please come so we can discuss them no. before they get bigger than they need to. Transparency is a very good thing. Exactly. All right. Um, did I have a second on that? I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Dion. Further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Dion. One uh, procedural oh. matter. Uh, you need to anoint Don as voting on this because oh, he's the Don, associate. you'll be voting on this. Thank you. Thank Look you. Look at that ben smile. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how long has it been? <laughs> it's been a few months. <laughs> right. Mr. Dion? Mr. Dion says aye. Mr. Robinson says aye. Um, oh. yeah, no, you're right. I'm going to go along. Uh, Ellen Sotillo says aye. Don Williams says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Thank you very much. You Thank you very you. much. Appreciate your help. So you can't open yeah. it until after the appeal period. Right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All, right. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Until the ver we've signed off on it. And yeah. So and the health yeah. department signed off on it. I'll have you guys sign the decision. Yeah. It'll be filed with the town clerk 20 days after the town clerk gets it. If there's no appeal, new hours. So the first day he opened at eight o'clock could be in twenty days. Twenty days from when the appeal. Well, twenty days from when the decision is filed. Usually, usually that's towards the end of the week. If oh, okay. So it doesn't get yeah. filed tomorrow. No. I've been writing uh, another decision that's taken parts of my life. It feels like. <laughs> no offense. Lot five. Uh, <laughs> right. So yeah, I'll have that decision uh, put together with the vermin control uh, information on it. Uh, and get that uh, out to you guys for signatures. All right, our next order of business is uh, a public hearing continued on the application of Beantown Home Services, Inc., requesting a special permit and site plan review. 
pursuant to sections 3150, 300, 43, 41, and 2230C of the Carver Zoning Bylaw, located at lot number 5, Ricketts Pond Business Park, Here's off Spring this. Street in Carver, Mass., Assessor's Map 32, lot 1. Dash five in the Spring Street Innovation Zoning District. The lot will be comprised of approximately 6,621 square foot light industrial buildings with associated driveways, parking areas, closed drainage systems, septic systems, and utility connections. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Eric Shoemaker, McKenzie Engineering. Uh, I believe since we last met, we, we've been in receipt of Andy Glein's latest uh, review letter. It should be dated July 25th, 2023. Um, just read it over and it appears to be um, recommendations and conditions on his end. Uh, I believe when we last spoke, uh, after review of the plans, we just came to a conclusion on a couple items on the landscaping plan. I believe that was uh, screening of a was a tree in the oops. I believe it was removal of this tree where I'm having the cursor over to provide a couple shrubs in that area instead. Yep. That was one condition we discussed, and then it was um, extension of this fence in the rear uh, to the from where it forms the gate. Um, to the northern limit of uh, the parking area in order to further screen the rear of the lot. Um, so with that, I think we can answer any questions the board may have. What, uh, what type of fence did you use? It was a six foot high white vinyl fence with six inch by six inch wildlife openings at grade. Are you going to be able to meet the 15% front facade in re regards to windows? So that's, um, that's a question for the architect. He's not here with us today, I believe. Um, we'll, we'll meet it. The front of the building will be designed to meet it, and I believe uh, that was a condition recommended by Andy. In the draft decision that I've... Uh, been working on condition number eight dimensions for proposed windows shall be verified during the building permit process and a minimum of 50 percent of the front facade is covered with windows as should the proposed materials for the building siding and um, in regards to if it's a private road or not it hasn't been established as a private road uh, and he identifies that um, the owner of the development is open to discussing this with the town, but I am unaware in regards that anything's taken place in that. Yeah, I, I don't believe anything has taken place on that. Um, that's, that's a question that I believe was directed at Peter Opachinski last time we met. Uh, I, I can't speak right you don't plans. you don't need to respond I was just making the notation that we haven't made it a, a private road so we have to treat it like a public road okay. um, we've confirmed that there will be no public access to the site that'll be posted correct And I saw the lighting was addressed. Yeah, the condition that, that I put in is similar to what we did for uh, lot three. They had talked about full luminaires. Uh, <coughs> the, the condition I put into lot three was uh, full cutoff light fixtures with uh, astronomical timers and motion sensors being installed uh, and verified as part of the building permit process. So the lights go on, go off based on when the sun sets. Uh, there's a motion detector when someone pulls in, the lights come on. The rest of the time they burn low or just are, are out because I think we talked about hours of operation. Yeah. Other than for security purposes, there isn't a reason for lighting the parking lot, correct? Yeah. What's the gross floor area? Uh, I'll go through my notes here. 10,527. 
square feet. So that's going to require a sprinkler system. Correct. Yep. And um, that's that's why we, we revised the plan in this most recent revision um, to include a cistern located beneath the parking area. Um, so the building will be sprinkled in accordance with um, with that law, and it will receive that fire protection service from the cistern. And that that design will be. Um, verified by the plumbing engineer uh, before issuance of the building permit. All right, because we'll need, we'll need the fire department to verify. If I may. So yes. the cistern will, can, the cistern will um, provide the water for the sprinkler system? Correct, yep. So amongst the, uh, the findings in the uh, decision, uh, the board finds that the adequacy of utilities and other public services are met, including access by fire trucks shown on the truck turning plan is confirmed by the Carver Fire Department. Carver Fire Department also noted that while the building has a footprint of less than 7,501 7, square feet, inclusion of the mezzanine or a second floor will trigger the requirements for a sprinkler protection. Additionally, the building may require a fire alarm system based on occupancy as defined in 780 CMR, the Massachusetts Building Code. Uh, this may include manual hand pull stations, horn strobe warning lights, smoke and heat detectors, etc. This determination will be made when the building permit is submitted per Assistant Deputy Fire Chief Boyle's memo. Right. Uh, my only, uh, I mean, my only thing is you. You've added sprinklers and a cistern since we last met. Has Andy had a chance to assess those? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but he basically said the fire code is the fire code. Uh, and uh, additionally, the building may require uh, assess Um has also noted that while the building has a footprint of less than 7,500, the inclusion of the mezzanine will trigger the requirements for a sprinkler protection. Uh, and then he cites 780 CMR, which is the Massachusetts Building Code. Um, and where is where's the cistern? going to be and how big is it going to be? It's 15,000 gallons and it's located approximately 15 feet to the north of the proposed building in the parking area. So, uh, Mr. Chair, through Please. you, the, the way a cistern works for a sprinkler system is you have to purchase the water to put in the cistern. Is that how that works? Yes. Yep. Uh, only because you know it's going to happen to people in the the area are going to say that their Second wells went dry because you know you have a sprinkler system so as long as they are well aware that you are purchasing the water to put it in the cistern then you know that takes care of that issue sure. so we add that as a condition hmm? add that as a requirement i just hope that's yeah. what we've been doing all along we, we did do it for uh lot number we have a lot one that's what I just wanted to make sure that, that, that we're following that process. So the required cistern uh, will be filled with water purchased by the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously if you pay your water bill, well, we don't have water bills, do we? But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you, they have to purchase the water. Right. And Mr. Chair, yes, I, I'm so sorry. Do you, do you have an architectural? Well, I don't. We don't have an architectural rendering rendering in front of us at the moment. Do you have one just so I can see them before? It, it, I know. It was I'm submitted. asking to revisit. I just wanted to make sure that um, I, it wasn't just a square building. Yeah, it's it's in the records. Uh, I know we're only going over what what we had to address. I just, because you're here, I just wanted to take a quick look at it. Of course. I know it's probably going to be have something that's built very nicely. So this is the floor plan? I was just looking for what it's going to look like on the outside. Yeah. Okay. And this no, is no, that's, a, that's a breakup. Oh, that's nice. Where's the loading dock side? I'm guessing this is the back of the building, and then that would make this the front. This, this was the one where you're coming in front and front backing your truck. Yeah, it has right. that front loading oh, so ramp at the angle. Come, yeah. You're going to come in and back in. Right, so. So it'll be backing into. 
this into area. this general yeah. so okay. they'd be coming in towards this part of the building and yeah. backing in. All right. And what have you done to the front uh, landscaping buffer in regards to making it um, seasonal so that it, throughout the entire year it it blocks the view of the parking lot? Yeah, so we used um, the recommended uh, I believe it was pollinator species list from UMass, and they have um, they have various criteria for season as well as uh, the different types of soil that each plant um, would thrive in. So we kind of used a mixture of of um, of that. Evergreens and yes, there's uh, I believe there's green arborvitaes to the rear. There's Eastern white pines, red cedars, redbud trees, uh, and oak trees at right. the um, front. I think you did you did fine on the two sides there. It was in front where the loading area is, and that has to be blocked from public view throughout the year. So that what's planted there should be there throughout the year. It shouldn't be the city's trees that lose or low lying plants that that all die during the winter. So we we added the trees and the shrubs to the front here and then we bermed it a foot as recommended okay. by your board uh, to screen right. it from use further. Yeah, I know I recall that. And uh, my other concern, which may or may not have been addressed, was does the area in front of the loading dock have to be a two-way or can it be a singular direction? It's, it's two-way, it's 24 feet wide, and um, I think that that would definitely help the traffic uh, you know, navigating the parking area if it's if it's two way. Uh, I think one way with a 24 foot wide aisle would really confuse drivers. So when your truck parks there at the loading dock, how far out does it does it stick into the driveway into the drive area? It's completely confined within the loading okay. dock. All right, and then there's 24 feet. Correct. Yep. And are you going to have some sort of? Uh, warning light or symbol there for pull-outs, pull-ins on the corner? Is, or is that truck going to be screened? Will people be able to see that the truck's there? Will he have a clear line of view to the entrance and exit ways? Yeah, he'll have a clear line of view with the height of, you know, the front seat at those trucks. Um, you know, this is pretty much accurate at the terminus of, of the ramp. Um, so he'll be able to see the parking lot perfectly. Um, and I I, I'm not quite sure if lights or if any of that is required. Um, I, I think G probably... Well, if it was obscured, if there were plantings there and cars were, couldn't see that the truck was pulling out, I, I would it. expect that some sort of safety implementation. But if it can be clearly seen that the truck is there and he can clearly see out, I think that... Yeah, they, they'll be able to see the truck. I want to say the, the ramp is, um, see the depth. The ramp is, is only a, a four foot elevation difference. Right, and there's no wall or obs obscuration, so when the truck pulls in, it, it can be seen. Yeah, it's a okay. retaining wall at grade, so nothing's blocking right. the view. All right. Concerns, questions, comments? No, we were you basically asking for some small signage that there was, you know, backing up or loading at the front? No, um, I, I wasn't sure if uh, along the, the lower part of the loading ramp there, if there was fences or bushes that might obscure the truck so that a car coming in or driving wouldn't see the truck was pulling out. But right. if it's not obscured... Yeah. You know, the back, the back of the truck's four feet down, but the ramp, you're going to see the whole top of the tractor and the cab is going to be up where you can see. Which is, which, was was down, I, which was the question I wanted yeah, answered, you know, yes. The back of the truck ends up level with the cement floor inside, so you can stuff it in and out. I, I, I'm more concerned about the driver being able to have a clear line of sight from either a car or the truck, but I think they've sufficiently mm -hmm. answered that question for me. And your employees are going to be educated on the fact that you need to use that area for loading. Yeah, we've been doing this for a while. They're, they're used to, you know, navigating those trucks. Can you, you actually have a place out? over off of Plain Street? Uh, no, we're, we're currently operating out of Plymouth in the industrial park. Because I thought I saw 
Bean Town coming out of. That there are some other companies. Could, could you just statement. identify yourself for the record? Uh, my name is G. Bradley, owner of Bean Town. Thank you. Concerns, questions, comments? No, I'm really happy with this project. All right. All right. Um, we've included all of Andy Glein's concerns in regards to this in our conditions. I have uh, uh, done my very best. I mentioned I've been living with this thing for a bit, looking to make sure I've got Andy's waivers and conditions in, in the decision. Um, so, um, are you going to be all right if it goes away? Hmm? Are you going to be all right if it goes away? I will have to find a new mission, but there's, <laughs> there are several of them queued up for me, so I, I think I'm going to be okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, yes, uh, I, I'm under the impression that we've covered those uh, waivers requested. Uh, uh, are, are in uh, here basically pasted from Andy's decision waivers to section 31 uh, 10G uh, 3442 uh, 3441 uh, and then the conditions that he had suggested uh, including uh, The lights, uh, the windows, a uh, uh, super key uh, lock that the, uh, the deputy fire chief wanted uh, for access to the properties. Uh, the SWIP, stormwater management issues, uh, uh, only hazardous quantities of, uh, only household quantities of hazardous materials are permitted, separate sign permit, uh, and the standard language about making sure that the certificate of occupancy has been done. Dumpster pad bermed, runoff from the dumpster contained to the site, vermin control plan. Um, uh, uh, there was a discussion about uh, uh, Andy did not recommend additional uh, monitoring wells for lot five uh, per three, four, six, five due to the proximity of the ponds and the infiltration basins. Uh, monitoring wells will be installed down gradient on lot five from other lots. And then in addition, I added uh, there will be a cistern filled with water purchased from a vendor. Um, have you been a uh, well? What about the wastewater treatment plant? Did we include that in regards to approval by the Board of Health, or have they already approved it? Well, I think what Andy said in his memo was that uh, FNO defers to the Board of Health for the review and approval of the proposed okay. wastewater treatment system. So we're going to defer to the Board of Health al also in regards Correct. to that. Um, he asked a question about. Uh, Proposed size of water service. Have we identified what the proposed size of the water services are? That that's usually designed by the mechanical and plumbing engineer, and that that will be verified prior to issuance of the building permit. Right, so that should be a condition. Also, um, I saw the in here. Uh, I don't see that. Uh, okay. uh, also, another the other one of the other conditions because it was the same on all the other properties um, that it be clearly identified that no public access uh, will be posted. Yep, at the, that. No public access at and the driveways. Oh, here it is. Uh, the very, very last thing. No wonder I didn't get to it. Uh, proposal, proposed size of the water service of the water system is still being sized. The conditions should be included to verify the size of the water system during the building permit process. So we will add that as well as the condition. added no toxic hazardous materials you're aware right right only household quantities of any hazardous yep. materials are permitted all right how does the board feel are we ready to close the public hearing in regards to this uh, anybody here I don't see anybody that wants to speak on this so um 
If you have nothing further to add. No, sir. Uh, so the chair will accept the motion to close the public hearing on uh, the application of B-Town Hope Services, Inc., requesting a special permit and site plan review pursuant to sections 3100, 5300, 43, 41, and 2230C of the Carver Zoning Bylaw located at lot number five, Ricketts Bond Business Park, off Spring Street. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Dion. Second. Uh, seconded by Ms. Sordillo. Um, any further questions, comments, or discussion? Seeing that, Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Ellen Sordillo says aye. And Mr. Williams, you are identified as a voting member of this. Mr. Williams says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Thank you very much. You have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Wait a minute, we close the public hearing. You close the public hearing, but you get also vote on it. <laughs> you know what? We voted to close the public hearing, and I was thinking we had closed it already. So you're, you're correct. So, so you got two votes special permit and the site plan because there's two things in front of us. So, well, we, all right, so we closed the public hearing. Yeah, so now you got to vote on the site plan four people and the special permit five people. And the special permit is specific to? To lot five. I thought conditions. they were taken in conjunction, no? Correct. I Take thought the bylaws said that we take them together, no? Uh, I usually put them on, uh, because, because of the associate <laughs> member, I just split them up. Because Don right, can't I, vote. I, I, Dan I, can't, Dan I, can't I, vote on the site. Because he can't vote, but I thought, yeah, I thought it was taken as as the same. I, but, um, that's typically how it is. But like I said, we got this. Uh, well, let's make sure we do it right. All right. So <laughs> the chair will accept a motion to approve the site plan for um, Beantown Home Services located at lot number five, Ricketts Pond Business Park, with the conditions as presented. I will make that said motion. Motion made by Mr. Robinson. Do second. I have a second by Ms. Sordillo. Um, further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Ellen <coughs> Sordillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. All right. The chair will accept the motion to approve the special permit for Beantown Home Services located at number five, Ricketts Pond, uh, with the conditions as described. I will make that said motion. I'll second it. Motion made by Mr. Robinson, seconded by uh, Mr. Dion. Um, Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Alan Stillo says aye. Don Williams says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Right. Hey, can I Thank have you. the mover in the second one more time from that? Uh, Mr. Minute. Robinson moved it and Mr. Dion seconded it. Okay. Thank you. And Thank you. That was on the special permit. On the site plan, it was Mr. Robinson and Ms. Circle. Got it. All right. Thanks, Paul. Take care. That's all done. That's all done. Thanks, sir. I know what I'm going to do next week. That adjustment is probably good. Yeah, find something to do. Starting to look good over there. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've, uh, <laughs> so we're all done with everything tonight. All right. Uh, Tom Planner notes Mr. Bott. All righty. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, we have our subdivision and ANR training on uh, August 31st at the fire station. A week and a day. Hmm? A week and a day, next yep. a week from yep. tomorrow. Uh, 6 p.m. Oh, it's not this <coughs> Thursday? No, 8.31. Oh, my gosh, that's fantastic. I was going to have to tell you that I had to leave at 7.30. Oh, oh good. I'm ha very happy to hear that. So 8.31. <laughs> uh, also, uh, the day before, there will be a public information session about the affordable housing lottery that will be held on Zoom. Uh, it's 6 p.m. for three two-bedroom, two-and-a-half uh, units with one car garage for these age-restricted rental houses on Plymouth Street as part of Santana Way development. Um, so that's the, uh, uh, the lottery. Uh, they'll be talking about how to qualify for the lottery and those sort of things. So those are held on Zoom. Uh, and this information is posted on our website, uh, both on the planning board, I think on the planning page, and as well as on the home page for uh, the town. We've also sent that information to the library uh, and to the Council on Aging building uh, to put out the word as much as we can uh, so folks know. I've seen it in a couple places, okay. so. Doing, doing what we can to, uh, you know, to uh, spread the word. 
Uh, <coughs> and then there was uh, a discussion uh, uh, Mr. Robinson asked about uh, signing decisions. Uh, and uh, so we have talked previously <coughs> about looking at our procedures manual uh, and uh, I, I sent it out some time back a few folks made comments on it and we really haven't circled back around to that and we really need to make time I need to make time to you know get into that and, and, and put some things together for you folks so we can look at I, it. I couldn't I couldn't read it because it was so tiny so uh, so so we've got to uh, we, we, we need to kind of take some time and look at you know how we go about uh, doing a business the best way to do this through those policies rather than doing things ad hoc as I've talked about before different places have had different mechanisms in Kingston uh, just the chairman signed the decisions in Falmouth uh, the board voted that the planner would sign the decisions and I never liked that, by the way. Uh, uh, so, uh, so there's a couple different models. We currently have everybody signs it, uh, and uh, the only delay on that is just if the decision is not perfectly ready when we're here, then it just takes a little while to get folks uh, into the office to get those it, things started. If you don't vote on the, if you don't vote in the affirmative on the decision, I don't see that what you should be required to sign it. Well, uh, when we had this conversation early on when a number of the planning board members didn't want to sign a decision. Uh, and town council's opinion at that point was when you sign the decision, you're not agreeing with the decision. You're just saying this is the decision. Uh, so uh, and that gets back to you know, how other folks have done it. So we're in Kingston where the chairman signed it, if somebody didn't agree to it, the chairman didn't agree to it, well, he was still going to sign it because he was the chairman. But uh, that signatures of a decision isn't an endorsement of the decision. It's just an acknowledgement that a decision has been made. Excellent. So um, once again, back to me, I have to you know, sort of get hammer and tongs back on that and, and bring it out and, and, and have that discussion. And those things, if we're uh, uh, amending our subdivision regulations, we would typically do it, uh, we'd absolutely do it uh, through a hearing process. As far as the board's regulations, uh, it's not required to do so, but I think it's good practice just to put it out there so if anybody wants to, you know, to comment on things, we just have it advertised. I'm more of a big tent kind of guy and would prefer to defer on being overcautious than undercautious for things like that. So uh, we need to circle back around to that and I'll make an effort to get more into that. Excellent. Um, I've made a request uh, of, of Mr. Bott um, to modify our agendas so they will look somewhat different from now on. They will contain all of this information that's currently in there, but it will also contain a little bit more information in regards to it. It's based on the Falmouth model. Yeah, so in Falmouth on the agenda, they have, when the application came in, uh, when the hearing uh, needs to be opened, and in some cases when a decision has to be made. So in the case of a subdivision plan, we've got 135 days for a subdivision. Uh, for, so there's a closing date for a subdivision. For special permits, there's no closing date, but there's an opening date. The planning board shall open a hearing within 65 days. Uh, and the reason those things are in there is to make sure that nothing gets constructively approved. So every member of the board knows that we have to make a decision by that in, in that uh, the expiration date sort of for that decision is also a line that says here's the last meeting you've got before the expiration date. So if we had something that was due on December 31st, uh, a decision had to be made by that, the agenda would include the planning board's last meeting is on December 25th. Uh, now I know you're not going to be here on the 25th, nor you're going to be here on the 31st, but that's, what it, that's basically what it is. When did it come in? When does the board have to act? And when is that last possible meeting? before we have to act. That'll be added to our agenda. That's, that's the discussion that we had. Mm -hmm. And uh, except in, in Kingston, looking at how other people do things, and by the way, Kingston is not a model. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a, something I'm familiar with. Uh, <clears throat> but in their case, uh, they actually have uh, the form of their agenda in their, their, on their policies and procedures and says this is how we do them. So we should likely put something together like that to make sure that, you know, we're, we're just standardizing things. Uh, you know, uh, Marlene, who was here uh, years before, 
uh, she came out of a, a full-on uh, planning department out of Falmouth. Uh, the folks, uh, and Jack Hunter, of course, was Mr. Carver planning for, you know, a couple decades, almost. I don't think he quite made 20 years. Jack and I worked together across the town lines. Uh, but, you know, our last couple of planners really haven't had that municipal background. So I think that some of those practices have sort of, you know, faded in and faded out. And I've been here over a year, and, and I haven't come in and said, oh, we're doing all this stuff differently. We should fix that because there's just a lot of things to do during the day. Uh, in addition to the time we see here at night. So we're working on sorting all those things out and kind of reinforcing those things that are good practices, bringing back the things we should have been doing right along, and then conveying all that information to you guys in the procedures so we all know how we ought to be doing things. And for the most part, you guys are doing a, a swell job. And it will also contain a list of upcoming filings. I think that's great. I mean, tonight was a perfect example. I was unaware of when he filed, so that was good. Great, because we only have 21 be days with the a &R, which means at best we're going to get one meeting out of it and we're not going to be able to do site walks because, well, he put his on the, on the 8th, so this was our first chance to, to handle it. But we should be aware of, of what our deadlines are. And yeah, and my goal has always been to have things in front of the board as soon as possible. So an a &R plan, when it shows up, it goes on the agenda. For a special permit, you've got 65 days to open the hearing, but the bylaw requires 30 days for a comment period. So when an application comes in, typically it's about 30 days from when that application comes in, unless it's an ANR plan, in order to make sure we've got those comments from the various departments and things like that. Yes, yeah, so, uh, right. A lot, a lot of our DPW Police Department, as we've saw, talked about tonight, the fire department, and, and we want those recommendations. Absolutely. The Board of Health, those are integral part of our job is uh, is really getting those. And even though our bylaws says it's the applicant's requirement to make sure those things get to those people, we make sure those get to those people. We do that in-house. And regarding the acting of the signature, I wasn't looking to give you more work, but what I was looking for was um, the opportunity for something not to be held up because personally I couldn't get in to sign it. Or, some, or maybe another member might have that, you know. All uh, oh, right, like I could be leaving on vacation tomorrow. But the lawyer right. uh, and not hold that, you know, applicant yeah. up. That yeah. was the only reason. Not looking to say. shirk out of the responsibility yeah. no. of signing, but giving the authority to someone other than myself who is going to be, you know, available. Town council said that as long as the majority of the board signs it, that it will, it will hold up. Okay. Yeah, like with the, uh, last week we had, when we had our site visit, uh, we had every signature on the plan except for one. I got to the site visit and went, oh shoot, there's that guy who hasn't signed it. And it was a guy, no, no. Uh, so I zipped back to the office, brought the decision back, he signed it there. It would have been fine to file it with four signatures, but uh, you know, I, I try hard to get you know, all of them on there. Sure. But the majority will, will do. So in a pinch. Well, I wouldn't want to be responsible for holding an applicant up just for the fact that my schedule wouldn't allow me to get back in here or sign something. That's where I was going with that. All right. Uh, planning board member notes. Um, I think I've, I've covered everything. I would like to um, be more aggressive in seeing that ANOIs are filed before uh, the submission. Uh, I think the 65 foot, 100 and 200 foot zones on all ANRs and subdivision plans is an important aspect in regards to our job and need to be taken in consideration. The town of Carver is a wetland protection overlay district as an entirety. So I think it, it directly relates to our job, and I, I want to make sure um, that those are included. Uh, other than that, do we have any further discussion? I have a discussion. So <clears throat> I'm here tonight to let you know that I'm possibly going to be leaving the board. I put my house up for sale. So until I'm no longer a citizen of Carver, I'm going to remain on the board. I just want to let you know. Well, well I want right. to say thank you for your service. Thank it's you not an easy service. job. It's not something I really wanted to do, but you you've done it well. <laughs> you, sh you should be quite proud of yourself. 
Anybody else? Seeing none, I will accept a motion to approve the minutes of 7 23 Who makes a motion? Motion made by Ms. Sordillo. Do we have a second? Could I'll be a last it. second. Yeah, <laughs> I'll second it. Mr. Dion seconds it. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. Kevin Robinson says aye. Helen Sordillo says aye. And Mr. Shea says aye. Uh, well, and I think that concludes our business for the evening. So the chair will accept a motion for adjournment. Mr. Dion says aye. Nope. I'll accept oh, the motion. Make that. Um, Mr. Dion so <laughs> makes that motion. Yes, I make said motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Sordillo. No further discussion. Mr. Dion. Mr. Dion says aye. Kevin Robinson says I. Helen Sedillo. And Mr. Shea says I. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Area 58, for your participation this evening. You all have a good evening.